In this Easy Ed video lecture, we are going to learn about friction, wherein we will take a look at block friction and then solve problems on block friction on both horizontal and inclined planes. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. Now, we will learn about block friction. In this topic, we will analyze dimensionless blocks acted upon by forces tending to cause motion. In simple words, the study of effect of frictional forces on blocks is called as block friction. The blocks can be modeled as a particle forming a concurrent system of forces. The following steps are used to analyze block friction. Draw the free body diagram of the block showing the weight W, normal reaction N, the frictional force F and the applied forces. Remember that the direction of frictional force is always directed opposite to the direction of impending motion. When the block is on the verge of motion, friction force is equal to the product of coefficient of static friction and the normal reaction. Remember that we should always indicate the direction of impending motion in the free body diagram of an object under the influence of friction. Since we have a concurrent system of forces in equilibrium, we apply two conditions of equilibrium, that is, the summation of all forces in x and y direction is taken as zero. Remember that the above given sign conventions are for a block kept on a horizontal plane. Sign conventions will change accordingly when the block is kept on an inclined surface. Now, we will learn to solve problems on block friction on horizontal planes. The following problems will be helpful to understand the concept behind frictional force in blocks on horizontal plane. The way we draw the free body diagram of the block show the normal reaction offered by the supports. Compute the frictional force and finally apply conditions of equilibrium to the system to calculate the unknowns. Consider the following problem. As shown in the figure, a block of weight 1000 newtons is kept on a rough horizontal surface. An applied force P is applied on the block to induce motion. Find the magnitude of P for motion to just impend. For the surface, mu S is 0 0.5 and mu K is 0 0.4. This is a simple case of block friction on a horizontal plane. Since the block is on the verge of motion, this is a case of impending motion and the frictional force will be the product of the coefficient of static friction and the normal reaction offered by the surface. Let us now draw the free body diagram of the block. Kindly note that we should always make sure that the direction of frictional force is always opposite to the direction of motion. Now we will apply conditions of equilibrium to the system. We will first equate the summation of all forces in the x direction to zero. Thus, we will be able to find an equation which gives us a relation between the normal reaction and the applied force. Then we equate summation of all forces in the y direction to zero. On substituting the value of n from equation 1 and then simplifying, we find that the magnitude of applied force P should be equal to 448.02 newtons for motion just to impend. Now let's take a look at the next problem. Block B is resting on the ground and block A is on block B. Block A is attached to a string which is connected to a pan carrying some weight, P. Find the minimum value of weight in the pan so that motion can start. The coefficient of friction between ground and block is 0 0.2 and between block A and B is 0 0.4. This is a case of block friction on a horizontal surface with two blocks, one above the other with only one external force. The tension in the string, which is equal to the weight in the pan P. In this system, there are two possibilities of motion. The first is the block A moves over block B, while the other one is that both blocks A and B move together over the horizontal surface. Let us now analyze the first case. In this case, we will first isolate block A and then draw its free body diagram. Now, we will apply the conditions of equilibrium to the block A. 
we will first equate the summation of all forces in the x direction to zero. Thus, we will be able to find an equation which gives us a relation between the normal reaction N1 and the applied force. Then, we equate the summation of all forces in the y direction to zero. On substituting the values and then simplifying, we find that the magnitude of applied force P in this case should be equal to 75.05 newtons. Next, we analyze the second case. Here, we first draw the free body diagram of the entire system. Now, we will apply conditions of equilibrium to the entire system. We will first equate the summation of all forces in the x direction to zero. Thus, we will be able to find an equation which gives us a relation between the normal reaction, N2, and the applied force. Then, we equate the summation of all forces in the y direction to zero. On substituting the values and then simplifying, we find that the magnitude of applied force P in this case should be equal to 103.52 newtons. Since the applied force required to move the entire system together over the ground is more than the applied force required for block A to move over block B, the system is set in motion at P is equal to 75.05 newtons with block A moving over block B. Now, we will learn to solve the problems on block friction on inclined planes. The following problems will be helpful to understand the concept behind frictional force in blocks on an inclined plane. The way we draw the free body diagram of the block. Show the normal reaction offered by the supports. Compute the frictional force and finally apply conditions of equilibrium to the system to calculate the unknowns. Consider the following problem. As shown in the figure, a 500 Newton block is placed on an inclined plane. A force P is applied to the block to keep it in equilibrium. This force is applied parallel to the inclined plane. Determine the range of values of applied force P in which the block will be in equilibrium. This is a simple case of block friction on an inclined surface. As we have to find the range of applied force P, we will therefore find the minimum possible and the maximum possible of value of P. Let us now analyze the first case. The minimum value of applied force for equilibrium of the block P min will just be sufficient to prevent the block from moving down the plane. The frictional force will therefore act upwards on the plane and is equal to 0.2 times the normal reaction. Let us now draw the free body diagram of the block. Kindly note that since it is an inclined surface, we will select different axes as shown in the diagram. The sign conventions are assigned according to the directions of the applied force. Now, we will apply conditions of equilibrium to the system. We will first equate the summation of all forces in the y direction to zero. Thus, we will find the normal reaction, N to be equal to 433 newtons. Then, we equate the summation of all forces in the x direction to zero. On substituting the values and then simplifying, we find that the magnitude of applied force P min in this case should be equal to 163.4 newtons. Next, we will analyze the second case. The maximum value of the applied force for equilibrium of block P max will just cause the block to move up the plane. The frictional force will therefore act downwards on the plane and is equal to 0.2 times the normal reaction. Let us now draw the free body diagram of the block. Kindly note that since it is an inclined surface, we will select different axes as shown in the diagram. The sign conventions are assigned according to the direction of the applied force. Now, we will apply conditions of equilibrium to the system. We will first equate the summation of all forces in the y direction to zero. Thus, we will find the normal reaction N to be equal to 433 newtons. Then, we equate the summation of all forces in the x direction to zero. On substituting the values and then simplifying, we find that the magnitude of the applied force P max is in this case should be equal to 336.6 newtons. Hence, the block is in equilibrium with the range of 163.4 newtons to 336.6 newtons. 
Let us now consider the following problem. As shown in the figure, a string passes through a small smooth pulley connecting two blocks weighing W1 and W2. One block is on a horizontal surface whereas the other is on an inclined surface. If the coefficient of friction is 0.2 for both planes, calculate the minimum ratio of W1 upon W2 to maintain equilibrium. In this example, the weight of block L is responsible for causing motion of the system to impend down the plane. We will now isolate the two blocks and draw their free body diagrams as shown. Taking different axes for block K and block L as shown. Since the block L is on an inclined surface, its axis is taken differently as shown. The sign convention is assigned according to the direction of applied force. Now, we will apply conditions of equilibrium to block L. We will first equate the summation of all forces in the y direction to zero. Thus, we will be able to find an equation which gives us a relation between the normal reaction N1 and the weight force W2. Then, we equate the summation of all forces in the x direction to zero. Thus, we find that the magnitude of tension in the rope T equal to 0.566 times weight of the block L, that is W2. Next, we will analyze block K. Let us now apply conditions of equilibrium to block K. We will first equate the summation of all forces in the y direction to zero. Thus, we will be able to find an equation which gives us a relation between the normal reaction N2 and the weight force W1. Then, we equate the summation of all forces in the x direction to zero. On simplifying and then substituting the values of tension in rope and the normal reaction of block K, we are able to find a relation between the weights of the two blocks. This ratio is found to be 2.83. Let's take a quick review of what we have studied in this lecture. We first learned about block friction. In this topic, we analyzed dimensionless blocks acted upon by forces tending to cause motion. Then, we saw the steps involved in analysis of block friction. These two steps must be implemented very carefully to correctly analyze block friction. Then, we solved some problems on block friction on a horizontal plane. These examples were useful to understand the concept behind frictional force in blocks on horizontal plane. The way we draw the free body diagram of the block, show the normal reaction offered by the supports, compute the frictional force and finally apply conditions of equilibrium to the system to calculate the unknowns. Lastly, we learn to solve problems on block friction on an inclined plane. The examples were very helpful to understand the idea behind frictional force in blocks on an inclined plane. The way we draw the free body diagram of the block show the normal reaction offered by the supports. Compute the frictional force and finally apply conditions of equilibrium to the system to calculate the unknowns.